me, what's up with you? Been here all night? I've been here for 20 minutes, me. Rise and shine. Why, though? I'm in a good mood. I've had a good result. <gasps> Has your wife come back? Uh, <laughs> You've got an early Christmas present. Tie. Brent, can I just say, never give a man a tie. Why not? Because we've all got them anyway. Men have to wear ties. It's like giving a plumber a bit of copper piping. <laughs> what, what do men like, then? Cufflinks? Jokey soap? We don't want any of it, Brent. All a bloke really wants for Christmas is a voucher that says, take this to 32 Sycamore Avenue. Mrs Janet Farns Barnes will be stark naked waiting for you. You can have as long as you like, you get a cup of tea afterwards and you don't have to have a bloody conversation. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so, good result. Not a present. You haven't had sex, have you? Oh, Brett, please do not approach the tomb of the forbidden subject. I'm a lonely celibate, me. I do nothing. I go home and fry eggs. If I ever do get a girl to come back to my place, I won't know what to do with her. I'll be flicking hot fat at her with a spatula. <laughs> well, what then? The hospital. My tests. I've had a nice little scan, I have. Oh, that's brilliant. So it's looking good again. I'm standing a good chance of getting to be a dirty old man. Oh, that's brilliant. So, when you're in your old folks home, plonked on your commode in front of the telly, I'll come and flash at you through the window. <laughs> well, tap on it first, make sure I got my specs on. <laughs> so, were they, like, really pleased with you at the hospital? Oh, they were over the moon. Tell you what, though, when it was looking a bit dodgy... Yeah. ..and I was thinking, that was a waste of a five-year rust warranty. Yeah. I was thinking, I could die here and I've never caught Bren in a bra. Oh, were you? Yeah. Dead and never seen Bren's bosoms. Ah. If I'd been dying, would you have shown them to me? I might have. Do you want to get one out now as a deposit? <laughs> I bet Sting's not humping potatoes. Oh, I bet he is. He does it for six hours at a time, does Sting. You'd need to be a potato to put up with it. Where, where's me carrots? Hang about. Hi, Stan. <laughs> Ooh, I don't like that. Failure to respond to cheery greeting. Didn't ask for a brew. He's getting a mood. I'd left filters off, you know, at the Derby Road turn-off. I'm going to phone the council. If you want to pile scrap metal outside the Central Library and call it aggression, you can be funded for that, no problem. But be a heterosexual white woman trying to turn left, you're not catered for. <laughs> <laughs> and Bob's kept me up with his coughing since a quarter to one. You're lucky you're not married to Sting. Well, don't wait. I did wait. You were just stood by the car gawping. I was not gawping. Oh, I have to keep moving, Jean. What are those for? Carrots, mate. I was not gawping. I just suddenly thought I got my pants on the wrong way round. <laughs> the label seemed to be digging in on the opposite leg. Shall I check, Jean? So I put my hand down. It was a brown flake. <laughs> something in my brow once and do you know what it was? A little tiny plastic Darth Vader. Ooh, where did he come from? Well, he come from the same place as Obi-Wan Kenobi, didn't he? <laughs> See Farrington Saturday when Braley shot through and Shah tapped it in. Said they weren't going to play him forward. Then they played him forward. Unflipping believable, isn't it? It is. <laughs> what was he talking about? No idea. <laughs> You're doing it again. What? You were gawping at the veg man. I was not gawping at the veg man. Well, you've remarked on his buttocks before now. <laughs> that was the bread man's lad, not the veg man. That was years ago. I'm completely unmoved by the veg man's buttocks. <laughs> Morning, old pixie with the laughing face. Hi, Twinkle. You all right? Don't tell me you want to know about my period. <laughs> <laughs> you don't scare me off that way. I've worked here too long. I've heard it all. Wombs, panty liners, nipple shields. Come on, if you think you're hard enough. Period. Ha ha, three weeks late. Bren, you sort it, I'm having a <laughs> <laughs> Tea! Yeah. And shut the door! Oh, he's not still in there. I'm going to the other one. Well, I'll come with you, but you'll have to keep up. Hey? Oh, you see, even with an urgent bladder call, you're handling. <laughs> What do you reckon then? Are you really three weeks late? Yeah, I am, Bran. Do you know when it might have, who it was, type thing? Oh, yeah. It's a really nice bloke, actually. We're just like watching vids and having a drink and that. And he'd done us a frozen pizza. He just took it out of the oven and, you know. <laughs> Did he use protection? Oven mitts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
don't know we did, yeah. Oh, well. It'd probably be all right, then, cos that's an urban myth, innit, that they put holes in every tenth packet. <laughs> have you ever been three weeks late? Yeah, I have, actually. Did you find out what it was? Yeah, I was pregnant. No, I'm kidding! I'm kidding! I'm only kidding. It won't be anything. It'll be a hard-boiled egg or something. Hey, Anita! Hey, I like your hair. Oh, don't! I'm really upset. I look like Fatima with bread. <laughs> I'm not to blame. Don't go laying this at my door. I wanted the maxi drum system installed throughout, but oh no, them upstairs prefer the drop down stack with the notoriously weak pin hinge. What? Anita went in the toilet while Stan was still in there. I had to sit on the seat, otherwise, you're getting no purchase on your spindle pin. She should never have come in. I had my corn out. <laughs> My dad was a desert rat. He saved a man's life with a tablespoon. <laughs> Enough. My corn's out, my dander's up. Leave it. <laughs> Bren, you go in and talk to him. Oh, thanks. You didn't see him when he came out the first time. It was like the incredible... Journey? No. Shrinking woman? No, talk sense. The incredible... Oh. How could Stan be like the incredible shrinking woman? He's a great big man, do you know what I mean? He's about as much like an incredible shrinking woman as something else that isn't like one. Well, I'm upset. It was me who saw him sitting on the toilet. I think I should have counselling. You can have some of mine. She gets on my wick with her rib tights. Philippa's coming to try and talk some sense into him. Are you nearly open? Won't be long. No. Counselling. My mother was trapped under a Blackpool tram for four and a half hours. She didn't get counselling. She got a cup of tea and two tickets to Charlie Drake. <laughs> Shutter's going up. Hi, Tony. Can I have 12 rounds of wine? You can have a bottle of wine and a night of hot sex if you'd rather. <laughs> I can't. I've got cystitis. <laughs> I can't have a drink till Thursday. Mm, 12 rounds. More fat spread. Hang on. He's still in there. You see, it might be better just to leave him. That's our toilet. We need access. I've worked on my pelvic floor. Jean's more or less let hers dangle. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of state is Stan in? Do we know? Well, his dander's up. He's threatened me with a block disinfectant. <laughs> OK, I'm going to try something. Stan! Beg it off! Well done. Short, sweet and useless. <laughs> What's happening about me toast? Shh, this is very delicate. And where has it got you? Having a pelvic floor like a bulldog clip. <laughs> well, if you'd ever let your Keith out of the spare bedroom, you'd find out. <laughs> Stan, I'm coming in. You're not. OK. Tony, Tony, can you do me low fat spread? Shh. You see, music might help him there. What does he like, Brent? Well, he likes the band of the Grenadier Guards, but they're not fit through the expeller. <laughs> Tony! Uh, sorry, love. Anita, do Jane's toast. Coming. Stan, this is ludicrous. I absolutely am coming in. You're not! Well, I am in a minute. You're riding for a big fat fall, Dolly Belfield. Just because I have a full sex life. Oh, yeah. And what's that appliance in your underskirt drawer? <laughs> <laughs> It's for stiff necks. <laughs> OK, I'm fed up now. It's me 12 rounds, low fat spread. I like your hair. Do you really? Yeah. It gives you a look of Fatima Whitbread. <laughs> oh, shut up, Anita! Girls! <laughs> no, I won't let go. Tony, can you sort me toast down? Give all your water, what you get on me going, had you? I'm getting my period. Well, do you want to get one for me while you're at it? Cos I'd flip in my <laughs> Would margarine be quicker? <laughs> Pushing in when a man's got his corn out. Come on, Sam. Come on, Sam. You're stupid and you've got a stupid oh, Ben! Oh, oh. Ow! Ow! Come on, Jean. Oh. To medical. Oh. Bren, get the accident books. Bren, can you spread them for Tony? <laughs> <laughs> Toast! Two foot cause of accident. Um, Arsing about. Fair enough. <laughs> that doesn't look right. Is there an E in arsing? <laughs> What's up with them all, Bren? Well, it's that ad bonfire night, long time till Christmas type feeling, isn't it? We can't have them chucking pans at each other till Christmas. Hi, Stan. <laughs> I've been having a think by the front steps. 
There was a canine faeces alert. <laughs> turned out to be autumn foliage in a lump. <laughs> and I felt I should come in and say to you, Tony, read this morning's incident. I was completely out of order. All done with Stan. But I don't know how Philippa Thing feels about it. She belittled my appliances. Did she? <laughs> As good as made fun of my gone. Not on, Stan. The barrows wouldn't have done that. Anyway. <laughs> what about Twink, then? She don't want to have a baby, does she? Dunno. She could have it adopted, maybe. Because there's hardly any babies left now for adoption, are there? People are turning up at these adoption agencies and saying, what have you got? And they're going, well, we've got, like, three mature students left in a bookcase. <laughs> And there's Anita. Well, she wants a baby, see? Hey, maybe Twink could do that thing. Oh, what's it called? Sounds like that place in North Yorkshire. Nesborough. Surrogate. <laughs> Gwen. Gwen, it's not how it seems, sweetheart. <laughs> what's happened? Well, it's something and nothing. We were having a laugh about it on the way here, actually, weren't we, kids? <laughs> That's right, yes. It's a gentleman friend. He's in a little bit of awkwardness with a so-called girlfriend who turned out to be plain clothes. I did say to him she's too heavy for a lap dancer. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm in a gorgeous little squad car. The suspension's superb. I remember being taken for questioning once on Malta and boy, I felt every bump in the road. <laughs> we should make a move, actually. Absolutely, sweetheart. Gorgeous, isn't she? Like a white Nina Simone. <laughs> Just in case I get delayed, Bren. Can you nip to the caravan for me? Yep. <laughs> if you look on the chemical toilet, you'll find half a shepherd's pie under a cardigan. I don't think the mints will go another day. <laughs> you could probably scrape the mash off the top and make potato cakes. I used to fry those up for Lauren McCall years ago. Do you remember, Bren? No. Oh, no, you weren't there. <laughs> I think she was lonely in later years. I used to say to her, you were lucky, Betty. You chose the right man. How many people can look back at the end and say, in the glare of the world's press, I picked my bogey? <laughs> Change for you, didn't it, Bren? Broke the routine, me popping in. <laughs> He's done for them, you see, Kirsty. You're out and about. <laughs> was she under arrest, Bren? I suppose so. Was that your mum, Bren? Yeah. Looked like she was under arrest. Yeah. Do you want me to do anything? No. I'm so furious with myself about this morning. I did a two-day intensive in workplace flare-ups and still make a complete rollocks of the whole thing. I tell you, my self-esteem, this low. Jean's all right. Got a cab on. She was laughing. She's fell out with Dolly. No, you see, I didn't even know that. And then there's Anita's Urdu. Urdu? Not Gujarati? <laughs> oh, Urdu! <laughs> Not that wrong, you see. You were just saying everybody's feeling really November-ish. We need something like, oh, what's that film? A Night to Remember? A day at the races? Nine and a half weeks. Genevieve. <laughs> Brent, night to remember, Genevieve. Kenneth Moore, they used to show Genevieve at the children's home for a treat. It's very healthy, actually, to break the routine. Oh, that's what my mother said. She said it was a treat for me, her popping in, which it wasn't, but anyway. <laughs> Why don't we have a tea party for all the mothers? Could do. Stan could bring his mother to make up for this morning. No. No, Stan, how would you like to bring your mother to a tea party? Bring her to a tea party? Are you crackers? She ran off with the piano tuner in 1954. <laughs> My dad's never got over it. He didn't cry till 1966 when Germany equalised. <laughs> and you want to bring her here to a tea party? You're in the wrong job. I know. I know. <laughs> I have four teas, one milky, one not so milky, one black, one not so black. I might have a jacket potato. What do you mean, one not so black? It's not for me, I have tango, I'm just following orders. That's what they said at Nuremberg. <laughs> <laughs> what does it come with, the jacket? Tuna and sweet corn, cheddar, coleslaw. Tuna. Can I just check something, Brent? Yeah. 
I've done all the invitations except your mother's. I just need the address of the caravan. Don't ask my mother. I'm not asking my mother to come. Well, I mean, she wouldn't come. I wouldn't ask her. You have to learn to state your needs, Bren. Oh, I can't bear that word, needs. What sort of other word I can't stand? Ashfelt. <laughs> Are you inviting your mother? <laughs> God, no, she's a complete nightmare. Da, 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 then, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Golly, I wouldn't ask my mother. <laughs> Any sign? No. <laughs> Gonna tell your mum? I don't know, Bren. Excuse me. Yeah? This tuna and sweet corn. Yeah? It's all mixed up. Keep going. Well, what I really wanted was tuna and sweet corn separately. We don't do tuna and sweet corn. We only do tuna and sweet corn. <laughs> I'm not with. We only do it with an. Un. I'm still not with. Tuna and sweet corn. Un means it's all mushed up. It goes together. Malcolm and Wise. Little and large. Wallace and Gromit. Baby food. <laughs> that doesn't go together. It's all mushed up. <laughs> Can I just say something? Do you mind? There's some quite big things going on in the world. There's rainforests coming down and polar ice caps melting and people living in cardboard boxes. You've asked for some dinner and we have actually given you some. It might not be a perfect dinner, but then it's not a perfect universe. And I think you have to, like, take what you're given and, like, deal with it, OK? <laughs> I'm really looking forward to meeting your mum, Anita. Well, she's always really busy. She might not come. Oh, golly, do you think she's a home worker? She's probably sitting at a sewing machine for 12 hours a day. Does she speak English? She may not go out, you see. Do you know anything about her, Bren? She's an estate agent. Oh, well, fine. <laughs> How do you feel? A bit pregnant, or...? I don't know. I'm a bit puffed up, but I've just had a can of pop, so... <laughs> And you better tell your mum. The thing is, she don't really have much idea what goes on. In her day, they didn't really do it, did they? How old is she? 38. Right. <laughs> Will you tell her? Me? You could tell her we're just one of those things, you know, someone cooks your pizza and you think, oh, go on then. <laughs> Will you tell her for me? Do you want me to? Yeah. Do you want me to? Yeah. Do you want me to, though? Yeah. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> Hello, Mum. Cup of tea. Did you get that skirt from a catalogue? <laughs> no. Pity. You could have sent it back. <laughs> Mum. No, honestly, it's very funny. Well, it wasn't meant to be. Dolly will tell you. I haven't got a sense of humour. I'm sure you have. What do you know about it? Sorry. <laughs> Where are you from? Sorry. <laughs> this is nice. Well, you're easily suited. <laughs> I just... Bren, should we go and see if those biscuits are out? Sorry, I just needed a breather. <laughs> I think your mum will come, by the way. Eh? I went to the caravan. She was a little bit... Drunk. Well, cheery. <laughs> I kept telling her where it was. I said, it's bring your mother to work. Everyone's bringing their mothers. I think she got it. That's nice, isn't it? <laughs> everybody, this is Stan's dad, Jim. And this is Jean's mum, Connie. Hello, everybody. <laughs> and this is Dolly's mum, Enid. Oh, pleased to meet you. They tried to get me in a tractor once. Oh. They don't flatter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I look rather good in mine. Do you? <laughs> Cup of tea, Dad. This'll be your first visit to Stan's place of work, will it? I'll drink my tea, if you don't mind, rather than chat. <laughs> Fair enough. I think these modern fabrics are marvellous. And lovely bright colours. Yes, and look at this elastic. Yeah, you can be bare arsed in seconds. <laughs> <laughs> if Jean was having a full sex life, these would be a boon. <laughs> It and no problems. Mother. But she won't take the trouble, you see. That's why Keith's gone off the boil. I keep telling her. Sex, it's like ice in a cake. You've got to bloody concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. It's a lovely canteen, isn't it? <laughs> I went to Surrey once. Really? Yes. On the coach tour. Oh. Guildford we went to. Guildford? 
Oh, golly, I come from just outside Guildford. So, did you look round Guildford? No, I didn't. I stayed in the cold. <laughs> <laughs> I could see from the car park it wasn't my style. <laughs> what do you do for the holidays, Connie? Oh, me. I'm in a fiesta mood on a daily basis. <laughs> oh, I can let my hair down any night of the week. Or day, for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> Love in the afternoon, what do you say? <laughs> Who wipes the tables down? Why? You ought to use vinegar. They used to reckon that stop you getting pregnant. Sorry? Vinegar. Well, how did that work, then? I mean, where did you put it? I put it on my chips, so... <laughs> so I had no chance, did I? <laughs> Hence Jean. Oh. oh, she cramped my style for a few years, that's for sure. Dolly was a beautiful child. Dainty. Just like a little doll. And then suddenly, woof, she looked like a dinghy with plaits. <laughs> that was puberty. It was not. It was pies. <laughs> they must have had the biggest bottom in Whitefield. Well, uh, they're a great pair of girls, your daughters. <laughs> are you the one that's got cancer? <laughs> well, it's, it's looking good at the moment. That's what they told you. <laughs> Would you like to look round the kitchens? I'll pass, actually. I thought you might like to see the sort of thing Anita gets up to. Hi, I have spoken to them. They're sticking at 825. Hold on and I'll be up to you. <laughs> Do you want to see the kitchens, Ben? Oh, I'll stick with the food if it's all the same to you. Mum. Twink makes me cakes, don't you, honey bun? And I get breakfast in bed, don't I? Mum. But I'm showing her up now. No, she's a good girl. Looks after me tip top, don't you? She's never given me an answer, worry. <laughs> Oh, no. It's awfully grim, isn't it, round right here? Hello. My taxi driver was a hoot flip, I was quite tickled. And black as your hat with a Lancashire accent. <laughs> oh, good. I had a panic on the train. I'd be expected to drink sterilised. Oh, cripes. Oh, come on then, kiss. Oh, flip. You haven't ironed between the buttonholes. <laughs> did you wash it buttoned up? Look, oh, I don't you know. did. Oh, Flip, you are a juggins. Now that's why they split on the collar seams, because you're pulling them over your head. <laughs> How long does it take to unbutton a blouse last thing at night? It doesn't matter. Oh, darling, why does it all go wrong? You shouldn't be here. I like it here. Yes, I know, but really it's. It's like a film with Albert Finney. <laughs> That's where your problem is. Watch it, Dad! <laughs> Don't tell me to watch it. I was a desert rat. We had to watch it. <laughs> That's how Chalky White copped it. Oh, yeah. He let his guard slip. Bang, no head. <laughs> was he dead? <laughs> He's never worked since. <laughs> of course he was dead. He had no head. Was he dead? He didn't have a head. What do you think he's doing? Living in a bungalow in Filey? <laughs> Once you get your head shot off, that's you. It's not an arm, is it? A head. What do you think he did? <laughs> what do you think he did? Put a hat on his neck and carried on as a bus conductor. <laughs> Oh, you were dead all right. Bang, let his yard slip. Good night, Vienna. Tell me to watch it. I did watch it. That's why I'm here now. Oh. That's it. You've snapped it off, Dad. I've saved your life, you mean. That was an accident waiting to happen. If that had been cracked when this canteen was full of people, woof, they'd have been dead in seconds. How am I going to fix it now? That's your problem, son. You work here. <laughs> I'm off for a second cuppa. I only live round the corner. You can pop in and see me. I've got a vibrating mattress. <laughs> I'll just go and... Uh... <laughs> of course, you see, we looked up to the government. That was the difference. Be 
because they behaved themselves. That's right. I mean, they did a lot of themselves with female hanky-panky. No, they ran off with these silly girls. Yeah. We never had any of that with dear old Ted Heath. No. <laughs> oh, come on, Jean. Put some elbow grease into it. Same with sex. <laughs> think of these new cordless kettles. I think they're rather a boon. I was a desert rat. When you shaved in sand and had to boil water in a paper bag, you don't get very excited about kettles. <laughs> All women. <laughs> you come around to us one night, Anita. I'll recess it for you. Oh, will you? Yeah. We'll have a Barry Manilow night. Is anybody <laughs> having a hot cake or anything? I'll have another of them coconut ones, thanks. Flip! Uh, Elva! How many O levels did you fail? <laughs> Twink? You all right, love? I'm just going to the toilet, Mum. Hang on. Well, I did pass scripture. Do you want me to tell her? Do you want me to? You better have that, I suppose. I just wanted to have a word about Twin Grant. I mean, I know you're a good pal to her, and I just wondered if everything was OK at work. Um, she's been ever so quiet at home lately. I just wondered if she was in any sort of trouble. Look, this isn't really a very brilliant thing to have to say. Bren, I won't stop, sweetheart. <laughs> Is this your mum, Bren? Yeah. Hello. I couldn't quite remember what... Uh, Philippa. What she said. I'd taken a couple of disprol. I was a bit out of it. <laughs> Bring your mother to work. Was that what she said? Yeah. Well, I brought her. <laughs> Come on, man. I don't know what use she'll be. She might be able to wash up or something. Is it like a youth employment scheme? <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> so what did you want to tell me about Twin? She is in trouble, isn't she? <laughs> um, it, it, just that she, um, she sometimes comes to work in her overall and uh, it's not hygienic. 